my wife's been in there decorating, kind of make it into a guest house. But the issue is it doesn't have internet. And we kind of want to get internet over there. So what I'm looking at is using the uh, TP-Link long-range transmitters. And if you think of wireless Wi-Fi where you can, you know, basically way out in the country, you know, they'll beam that Wi-Fi signal like 10, 15 miles. This is like the same thing. It's just a scaled down version. So what I plan on doing is installing those and wirelessly beaming a signal to here, converting the signal to back to Wi-Fi with a, uh, basically a Wi-Fi hotspot. Let's see if I can get Wi-Fi set up in this little guest house, um, relatively cheaply. Okay, to be able to transmit the internet from one house to the other, the first thing you need is you have to have an internet signal outside your house on an ethernet cable, a network cable. So, to be clear, there has to be a network cable outside of your house with the internet signal on it. And a network cable is like the same one you would plug into a printer or your computer or whatever your home router, you've got network ports on your router. That's that's the kind of connector I'm talking about. The way I'm doing it is using power line adapters or extenders or whatever you can see it on the screen. Basically what they are is, so if you look at the, the picture, on the left, the little silver box, what you would do is inside your house, you, pl you run a cable or a network cable from your router over to this little silver box, right? Just like the same way you'd run a cable to a computer printer or whatever. Except you plug it into this little silver box, then you take that little silver box, you just plug it into the wall. And so what it does is it adds the internet signal to your house wiring. All right, so the way you get that internet signal from your house wiring is one of those little boxes on the right. And just as an FYI, you, you only need one box on the left, you can have a bunch of the ones on the right, so it's not it's not a one-to-one. -one. That little silver box transmit it, transmits it, but you can have a bunch of the little white boxes, all right? Anyway, when you plug that white box into another outlet, in your, it has to be on your, in your house, on your electrical circuit. Um, it actually pulls the internet signal through the electrical outlet, and then you can plug in, you've got two cables on the, two cable connectors on the bottom. You can see, you can, so you can plug in like a computer and a printer or whatever. And then you can also have it actually broadcast a Wi-Fi signal. Now, I'm not going to be using the Wi-Fi part. I'm just going to be using one of the connectors on the bottom. But just so you understand, the way I am going to get the internet signal outside my house on a network cable is one of these. Because I've got a plug outside my house. And so I'm going to plug... I mean, I'm going to plug an extension cord into it, but then I will plug this thing into the extension cord, and then I will have the internet signal right there, and all i got to do is plug a network cable into this thing, and voila, I've got a network cable outside my house with an internet signal on it. However you want to get the internet outside your house, it's fine. This is how I'm doing it. So, these are the things I purchased to do this little project. So... On the bottom, you see those point-to-point -point wireless bridge. You need two of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one is configured as a transmitter, and one is configured as a receiver. So they're the same things. It's basically when you set them up, you tell them what they're going to be. You tell this one, you're going to be a transmitter, and tell the other one, you're going to be a receiver. So, all right. The other thing I bought is once you transmit the Internet to the other house, you need a way to broadcast it. And so I bought an access point. Um, the unique thing about both of these, like all three items, the two, the transmitter, the receiver, and the access point, is they all use what's called power over Ethernet. And what that means is they don't have a separate power plug. The power they need comes through the Ethernet cable, or what some people would call the network cable. Now the way that works is each one of these items comes with what's called a power injector. The way the power injector works is, it's not pictured, but there's an actual cord that comes out of that you plug into the wall, all right? And so your network cable with the internet on it comes into the LAN side, and then what happens is that same internet signal comes out of the other side, the PoE side, 
but in addition, it's also added power to it, electrical power, electricity. So the thing to understand about these is you have one side, which is only the internet signal. The other side is the internet with power on it. And you'll see that in the diagram I'm showing. Something else, <clears throat> a setup notes, you're going to need to know how far you're, you're going to beam this signal. And I would just suggest using Google Earth. That's, this is a picture of the top view of my house. And you can see there's a lot of construction going on, septic at the time. But um, you can just go to Google Earth, right click, measure distance, and it's very accurate actually. I mean, within, within a couple, of, I did a fence and it was like within a, I mean, over 350 feet, and I think it was within a foot. So it's very accurate. And you can see down there where it says total distance 187 point blah blah feet, 57.08 meters. So 57.08 meters, if you don't know, would be 0.057 kilometers. You know, that's why the metric system sucks, because it's too simple. But so basically, 0.06 kilometers is how far I'm going to be sending the signal. And that's information you'll need when you're setting this thing up because this is a screenshot from the configuration of the transmitter. And one of the things that asks you is, hey, how far am I going to send this signal? And you can see I've got it highlighted, 0.06. And you can also see this thing technically can go up to 28 kilometers. Um, but the one thing you need to know is the farther away you get, the more accurately aimed these have to be. And my assumption at 28 kilometers, you better be laser perfect, you know. The other thing is don't assume that the more distance you give it, the stronger the signal will be. It's actually, the signal is what it is. The longer you have the distance set, the more narrow the signal's going to get, so the more sensitive it will be to aiming. So I'll link to an article down below where they walk through setting one of these up and what they found is do you want to have this accurate don't try to overshoot your distance thing you're going to get a better signal because you won't and it'll probably actually hurt you okay so now we're going to talk about the actual configuration at my house from A to Z so if you look over it says the internet and that's basically my cable modem but the internet comes into my router at home and from my router, I have a network cable that runs from the router to one of those little AC power line adapters. So that was what I talked about, the silver box. You know, the one that takes your internet signal and broadcasts it over your house electrical system. From there, the internet signal goes over the electrical system to one of the AC power line receivers, which is outside. Alright, so that's the one that you can pull the signal from your electrical system. From there I've got a network cable that runs to a power injector. So the wire coming in just has the internet on it, on that network cable, and the wire coming out has the internet on it on a network cable and electrical power. And that cable runs to the transmitter. Then the transmitter broadcasts the signal and it's received over at the guest house by the other point-to-point -point thing which is configured as a receiver. Now that receiver is connected to a power line adapter and that power line adapter is powering that receiving antenna and then that power line adapter just sends the internet signal only, no power, to another power adapter <laughs> and then that power adapter takes the internet signal only adds power to it and then sends it to that router because I don't know if I said it the router I purchased also used power over Ethernet so if you want to freeze it and look at it but that's the configuration all right and I may have the cables plugged into the wrong way on those power injectors but the cable going to the router and the cable I'm talking about Ethernet cables going to either the transmitter or the receiver. Those are the powered sides. And then at the guest house, the cable that runs between those two injectors, that would be running from, I think it says LAN to LAN. 
And hopefully all of this helps. Thanks. Guest house base link, what I did is I disabled the Wi-Fi. So you can see the Wi-Fi symbol is not lit. That's to try to keep down the heat. We get ready to go and plug a laptop into it with a cable and we'll check and see what it gets. Okay, you can see I'm connected on the Ethernet line. I think it will. It shouldn't. Nah. So 50 megs a second out here. So we can check it again later, but that's not bad. All right. Okay, you can see that's where I was sitting right there. There's a laptop and the thing that's plugged in. That's where I plan on putting this project box like right in here somewhere. And then I'll mount the transmitter to that pole. And we'll shoot the signal all the way over there to that little house over there. So you got a power plug over here next to my kid's computer. So we got a power plug coming to the power line adapter, which is pulling the internet from the electrical socket. Internet, you know, can land. I'm just going to call it the internet comes out of this wire. Through this, where now power is added to it, so now it's like internet is also actually carrying electrical power. Comes to here, boo, to this thing, which you can see is on, blinking. It's broadcasting and transmitting the internet over to here, which it is getting power from here. So the internet comes from here over to my PC so this is the way it'll be set up with the exception of this will be plugged in at my house and this so this power plug will be plugged in over at the guest house and so between here and here it'll probably be about a hundred meters don't forget about this is just electric, so don't worry about that. Just think of that part right there. So it's pretty sweet. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm taping off the inside because I've got two of these boxes. So, as you can see, what I'm going to do is paint the inside because I'm trying to do everything I can to minimize the heat, and these will be <clears throat> outside, and basically, if you look, you know, this is, <laughs> I mean, it's basically a freaking greenhouse, so, I do have some of that silver tape, but I figured I'd paint it first, and then see how it works, um, I'm just going to paint inside, like if you've ever done old RC car bodies that come clear, it looks a lot better, so, you'll see. Okay, I've got some more time to work on this thing. I'm going to try to get it done today. So the next thing I've got to do is get the get the boxes prepped to accept this stuff. So um, I need to go drill a hole or do something so this power wire and this network wire can go from inside the box to outside the box. All of this stuff right here will be inside the weatherproof box. Okay decided what I think I'm gonna do instead of cutting up here I'm gonna cut under here and probably cut pretty far down and see if I can bend this out if it'll bend if it's gonna bend for me or if I'm going to have to uh, cut it out hopefully I can get this to bite
see what I got here is two holes. Hopefully. Yeah, so now we're going to take a masonry bit, which is one of these. This is one of those times if your drill has the uh, hammer, this is the time to use a hammer. If you're using a masonry bit trying to drill into rock. Everybody else can use your hammer drill as a hammer. Okay. There. I just decided to use hot glue because it is glue. And the other thing is silicone won't really hold this stuff together. Not as good as this will. And whenever I use silicone, I always get it all over me. And I'm already sweating like a pig, so adding silicone to the mix just didn't didn't feel like it today. Okay, so that's all sealed up. Now what I'm going to do is jam this stuff in here and pack that hole full of it. Kind of let it sit there and try to get it to harden before it drips out. But I've got the green lights, so it's good. So I'm going to shut this. That's done. Pretty much pointing right at it. You see, there's the box, and there's the antenna, and it is going to transmit it all the way over to this little house right here. It's like a little. Okay, everything's the same over here as it was over there, with the exception of there's no um, power line thing basically pulling the internet from the power line for lack of a better terms so I'll show you there's the uh, antenna right there I think you can see it on that pole so it's receiving the signal coming down through this blue wire over up into the box where the only thing that's happening in this box is power is being added to this to power the antenna and then power is being added to this to power the hotspot because the hotspot I bought is power over ethernet also so if you look in here all there is is two they call them power injectors so you got the extension cord right here two power injectors and remember all these do is add electricity to the, to the cable so and then I ran the cable and I was able to sneak it under the um, window unit into the guest house so you can see and I'll clean this up too I don't like that okay so I just finished putting a connector on this cable and I have not tried it so let's see if I plug it in and see what happens sweet all right let me read the instructions on how to set this thing up 
Okay, you can see I've got the uh, wireless transmitter, router, whatever you want to call it. They're mounted on the wall. And you can see it has no power line. It's getting its power through that Ethernet cable. So, um, overall, I really like this setup. I've just did a couple of speed tests, and I'll put one up there. Um, I usually get around 20 to 22 megabits per second right now. It's getting like 18 or 19, which doesn't sound really fast. This is things that always gets a steady 18 to 20 download, and it's a, and the thing is it's a steady. It's not a you know it's not a where it's bouncing between 10 and 70 up and down, and it's a really solid, slow but solid signal. I mean slow compared to you know my in the house at the router from the from the cable provider. I'm getting 400 megabits a second. So the other thing is I've got my network pulled down to nobody can grab more than no nobody no device can grab more than 50 so i've got you know no device can grab more than 50 megabits per second but either way over i mean i'm kind of rambling here but overall it's really i think it's a really good solution it's easy and it really solves that problem of if you're trying to get internet a long distance um, and you don't want to dig a 200 foot ditch recommendations go read i'm going to post the article i got the idea from or that gave me the that reminded me about this technology stumbling block part of it for people will be the initial configuration of those two boxes and now if you go to tp link's website they actually have or on youtube after the fact, I was looking for something else, but I actually found they have tutorial videos on configuring these things, so it makes it really easy. Um, but overall, I love it. It's, it's a really cool um, solution. So I hope that helps somebody. See ya.